Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a star at the very least on my review of Pirates in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is Wizard of Oz book number 25, continuing on, continuing on the series. I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, I'll give you some updates along the way, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end, so... Dane reads... Pirates in Oz in which the old Gnome King attempts to recapture the Emerald City and regain his magic belt. Much to the horror of Peter, the Philadelphia boy who returns on a flying poetical pig to try to save Oz. Hindered by a band of mutineering pirates, Peter is helped by a magic ship that sails through both water and sky. A king who wants only to be a seafaring cook, and Samuel Salt, the swashbuckling pirate captain himself. So, we'll check out some tabs. We get a lot of the same kind of humour and puns in this one, so uh, the gnome, the gnome king, Regado, can't actually speak in this at, the, at this point. And he goes, everyone is against me, every one, every two, every three, and every body. And um, he finds this land that's looking for a dumb king, and they, they subject him to the dumb test. Um, and we get this, which I just think is very funny. I think this is kind of true to our own approach to royalty. This person has passed the dumb tests. He cannot talk, he cannot act, he cannot think. He will make a splendid king. Oh, this is um, Rugido. He has some great exclamations. Uh, he goes, Blazes and bluing, willy goats and wildcats. If I had that chondro, I'd wring his neck. I'd... And then he realises, wow, he can talk. So we get a few typos in this. So we here we have, uh, uh, How does the king behave under such conditions? He inquired tremulously, as the first knock was followed be by a series of blows. Uh, we get some great piratical humour here, and also some ex exclamations, which I do, do love in this, so... Well, bless my buckles. The pirate dropped his scimitar with a crash. It's a boy! What ship spilled you, little lubber? You've had a taste of the sea, I see. Ha ha, a joke. He's had a taste of the sea and for the sea. Now, doubtless, he ran off to sea to see what he could see. Ha ha ha! We get the great line. A shipwreck, you say? We rammed and sunk or blown on the rock? Some more great exclamations from Samuel Salt, the pirate. Shiver my liver, shiver my liver and shatter my shins. I'll goosewing your topsails for this. Nice little bit of innuendo again. Thoroughly aroused, he banged his fist so hard on the table that the shell plates bounce and skip. We get another great exclamation. Great golly walkers. Oh, and then we get a sea shanty, expelled, except it's spelled chanty, C-H-A-N-T-E-Y. Which may be where sea shanties get their names from, because they were chanted, I, I don't know. And we get, ho, storm along, my bullies, where the waves are all high and free. Old Davy Jones can have his bones, but I shall have the sea. Some more great exclamations. Uh, Billy goats and bottle birds, if I just had my magic belt, I'd turn them to pebbles and pitch them into the sea. I'd turn them to potatoes and boil them for supper. And I like this, this is kind of actual wisdom. Um, Peter goes, gee, I wish I could grow whiskers. Nonsense, grumbled Atto, getting heavily to his feet. You can grow whiskers when you're too old to do anything else. I'd trade my beard for your nimble legs any day in the week. Another great ex exclamation, shiver my liver and shatter my shins. And I like this, um, we get, I for one am not going back till I find something to eat. Me neither, declared Peter, forgetting all about his grammar. I like the fact that she deliberately included a grammatical error and then pointed it out. We have a goat that mutters something questioningly. I'm never a fan of uh, adverbs. Shiver my liver and shatter my bones. Oh, and then uh, and we get, and for the first and last time on the voyage, Peter saw the pirate really aroused. It's because he loves his boat, chuckled the boy. And we get this little one too. When I come to that goat, I'll bust her binnacle, exploded the pirate vindictively. Not only her binnacle, but her hatches as well. You can't do that, Sammy, observed Ato, stopping short with his arms full of bananas. She's a good goat. Besides, I don't believe breakfast has a binnacle, and she can't help growing bananas. That's her business. So yeah, the goat just generates bananas like some weird NPC in a video game. We get a line where she just goes, and blah, 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 I'm telling you. And that bothers me because you shouldn't directly address the reader. And uh, Peter says, don't let her sink your boat. And he says it warningly. Again, another unnecessary adverb. All right, well, that's pretty much all I have to tell you about Pirates in Oz. There was some good stuff. There was some not so good stuff. But overall, it was okay. More of the same old, really. If you've read up to this point in the Wizard of Oz series, you might as well keep going. I mean, it's book 25. I am going to keep going. Um, to be honest, again, the plots have been recycled so many times by this point that now I'm really mostly in it for the gags and the puns and the plays on words um, because those tend to be what mark each book apart from the others. But um, yeah, it is what it is. I gave it a uh, 3 out of 5. 
So there you have it, that's what I made of Pirates in Oz. I've always don't forget to accept, oh my god, I've lost my words. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.